Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and today I want to share with you on how to build a fun techie solution for friends and family events. And for me, it all started with celebrating my wife's 40th birthday because hey, you only do that celebration once a lifetime, so we thought we'll go big with it. So we invited some friends and close family members over and in the process of having fun, we asked them to fill out this quiz to really know how well they know my wife Rosanna. And after the end, we actually picked the top two winners and gave them the prize. But we also went through each and every answers of all the questions and people had a great laugh over it. So this truly was a great, exciting and a wholesome time. And I'm gonna share with you all the techie stuff that I did in the background to make this successful. So stick around, this is very informative. But first, here's my intro video. So the first thing that I worked on is building an electronic form of people filling out the quiz. And you guessed it, I used Microsoft Forms for that. Because one of the things I wanted to do was anonymous access. Because all of these friends and family members cannot be part of my tenant. That's just too many licenses. But the anonymous access worked just fine. And so that's where Microsoft Forms came in. I came to Microsoft Forms and here is where I started building the quiz. Now I did get a little bit of help from Copilot, but some of the design ideas, my wife already had it. In fact, this home page over here was completely her idea. Going ahead and having the flowers, uh, this title, and also this subtitle text. So it's very important that whoever you're building this for, that you have this discussions upfront how this should be. All right, so after that was going ahead and adding all of these questions. So as you can see, there's 140 points. So what we did was there was actually 14 questions of the type quiz for the attendees of the birthday event to see how well they know my wife, Rosanna. And for each of the actual questions, um, there was 10 points given. Now, just because you see 140 points over here doesn't mean that there were only 14 questions because I had to add some more additional questions. For example, because this was an anonymous form, I had to know who is this person filling it. So the very first question was, what is your name? Also, if I go towards the end, in addition to actually asking the questions, I also gave them an opportunity to go and share some either wishes or some good memory they had. This was actually a really good one. A lot of people shared some good memories. But then after that was the communication factor. Because if you can go towards the end, I just asked them, hey, would you like to know what your score is? And over here, I had to put in a branching rule. So if I go back over here to the ellipses and I go and see the add branching, for that question number 17, if people did not, again, if people did not wanna see the score, then it would jump straight to the end of the form. But if they wanted to, I gave them the option to receive a text message. And so for question number 17, if they selected yes, the branching would directly jump them over to the 18. 18 was me to find out who is their cell phone provider and then also go and get their cell phone number. So again, branching really helped over here, but the point is that I had to add some additional questions. All right, so for as far as the design goes, I really had to go and talk to my wife, Rosanna, about this because even though I could have used Copilot for some of the design piece, um, all of this actually came from the person. So you might have to do the exact same thing. Depending on who this is for or what the occasion is, get some feedback, get some ideas, because all of this was purely by the birthday girl, the design of the homepage, the text, everything. And then obviously, all of these 14 questions and their answers came from her. So you definitely have to have some discussion. In addition was the overall design of this form. So if you actually go and do a preview, you get this first homepage. When I click on start, for each and every question, I put it on its own homepage. So I went and put this in as John Doe. Then it tells me go to next. After that was the second question, so on and so forth. So you guessed it, I used a lot of sections over here. So if I go to the back, you will see for each and every question, I basically put it in its own section because I was already anticipating people using their smartphones for this and I did not want to put too much scrolling options. I planned it such that it'll be one question per view and it's easy for the end users. So therefore for each question, I put it into a separate section. And that also took care of the last piece. See, so all the way if you scroll down, um, the last question about the memories, 
in its own section. And then the final piece about the contact information, I put that also into its own section. So here we go, all the last three questions was put into own section. So that's the little tip that I'm sharing when it came to the designing is use sections and then for each of the quiz type question, put it in its own section so that navigation becomes a lot more easier and visible specifically from the smartphone side. And from the setting standpoint, again, just to show it to you, this had to be anonymous access. So the option that I selected was anyone can respond. Um, and then I also put in these, uh, and then accept responses. I put in a start date uh, showing a progress bar and I put in a custom thank you. Now, all of this was the easy part. Where I was struggling with is I would like the people to know what their overall score is I did not want them to see what the answers were because, because I didn't want the people to have the options of sharing the answers with each other. All I wanted to know was how much did they score. And I'll tell you what, sadly, Microsoft Forms doesn't have that flexibility right now. Because if you scroll up, you will see that in the option for quiz, there is this option. It's like show results automatically, but it shows all of them. It shows the question and the answer, not just the score. And all I wanted was the score. So I could not go with that option, which is show results automatically. I had to keep that as toggled up. So as a backup solution, I went and used a combination of that Excel spreadsheet where the data comes and Power Automate. All right, so we're done with the Microsoft Forms building it electronically, but here I had to also go and get a QR code and provide that to the end users. So the first thing that I went was go ahead and go to the collect responses. And over here where the QR code is, I went and got that QR code downloaded that QR code. So let's just go and do that. Select it, downloaded it. I have it available over here. And then the next thing that I did was I went to my Canva. Now, I, my wife is the one who designed all of this. This was her baby and she wanted to make sure it was perfect. So she went ahead and did all the designing in Canva. And one of the things that we did was after the design was done, we printed it in a cardstock paper style. Those are basically thick ones. In fact, uh, we've got ours purchased from Amazon. You see that these, this is an eight and a half by 11 inches, thick paper, uh, which is pretty nice from a good design standpoint and easily able to print that from the house. So these are just some examples of cardstock. Uh, but one of the things we had to do was actually go and add that QR code in Canva because that's the app that we are familiar with. So I just directly went to my uploads, went ahead and gathered that QR code. I put it over here, but I had to do a little bit of designing because there was just too much text coming in. So I just went ahead and minimized all of this, went ahead and minimized all of that, just making it a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more easier to manage. All right, and then if that is good, try to align it as center as possible. And there you go, this was the nice QR code. And once the design was done, I went ahead and actually downloaded that. So I went and downloaded it, went ahead and did that as a JPEG, got the actual downloaded copy of the JPEG. See, went ahead and actually downloaded it, but I still had one more step to do. I actually went into my PowerPoint and I went ahead and grabbed download, which I put over here and I tried and I moved it around so that I could only put um, six per screen and that way I could actually print out six. So I went in and I did a lot of this, you know, making sure that I can actually get these many, uh, did another control C, control V, moved it around over here, just like that. Um, and after that, I was able to go ahead and you know highlight all three of them, do another control C, control V, and just making sure that I can make them down just enough to get me at least six and make them a little bit bigger. See, so this is basically the, the playing around that I did to get exactly the right size that I wanted. Um, and for me, the six worked, uh, but you could also take it up to eight because eight also works. But that way I was able to, from one sheet of paper on this cardstock thick paper from one printout, I got eight. And then after it was printed out, I was able to cut it up nicely. It looked really professional, but what I did was I made sure I had enough. So then people were sitting by the tables, I put a few out over there. Um, that way people were able to identify it, scan it, and fill out the form right over there from their mobile forms. So this was the entire process of building the quiz, getting the QR code, going ahead and making sure I had some cardstock papers, and then using PowerPoint to finally print it out. Next, I'll show you how I handle the Power Automate piece. All right, so the second half of this fun techie solution was if people wanted to see what their test score is, they will go ahead and select that solution in the form, and I opted in to use Power Automate to send it to them as text. Now, the text messages goes through my Microsoft 365 Outlook, 
And at least I know that in the United States, the service providers do provide this option for free as long as I know what their phone number is and what who the service providers are. In fact, I'll put a link over here to a short video that I've done on this topic. Go ahead and take a look at that. So here I ran into one challenge and that is because of the Microsoft Forms connector. Um, so first let me take you directly into the flow. This is the one birthday quiz demo. Click on the pencil. One of the first things is the trigger. When a new response is submitted, go ahead and get that submit details. So if I click over here, this is the actual form, like the birthday quiz demo, that's the one. See, this is the form that I showed you before. This is the form where when a new response is submitted, that is the trigger for this Power Automate Cloud Flow. And then step number two is to go ahead and get the response. Now, I tried so many things. I went and asked so many people. Some of them are huge experts in Power Automate. And I got the same response is that no matter what happens, you do not get that final score. You know, that final score up to 140 points. For some reason, this API of this connector just doesn't give you the final score. Um, so I just had to figure out how to do it. Now there is a long way, which is you can go and get a score of each and every answer. And then in your Power Automate, you basically do that auto magic to keep track of each scores and then go ahead and tally that up to give the final score. It is a very convoluted process and I already have 14 questions, which means my score can get really complicated. However, there was one other way that I was able to make this entire workflow a lot easier and that required the Excel spreadsheet that we get from Microsoft Forms. So there is some user intervention, almost like an intermediate step that is needed for this Cloudflow to run successful. Would you call that as a perfect solution? That's completely up to what your scenario is, but it really worked well for me and it made this entire Cloudflow so much more easier. So let me show you that. We gotta jump back into that Microsoft Form and one of the things you need is at least one response. So right over here on the top right, you see where responses, I have gone and at least filled out one. So when you go and fill this out at least once, yes, you see over here, but now on the right, you see this option. It says use Excel to view up-to-date results. Go ahead and click on this open Excel. It will go and get a brand new Excel spreadsheet just ready for you and it puts it in your OneDrive, see? So it's gonna go ahead and put it in the OneDrive, which we'll go and take a look at in a second. But now it is also going and doing the first time sync. I've actually done videos on this. You can go and take a look at that later on. Uh, but what this does is this workbook will sync automatically when any changes happen in the form. The important criteria for that to be successful is your Excel spreadsheet needs to be open. So I was able to actually go and take one of my laptops at the event, just keep it in the corner, uh, just so that I can see this data coming in real time. Obviously it had to have internet connection over there. Uh, and that way the flow took information from here. It didn't directly go into the Microsoft forms. It actually took it from this Excel spreadsheet and then it went ahead and actually gave that total points. See this total points? This is the missing information that we directly cannot get from the Microsoft Forms API. However, the intermediate step of using Excel, that is what solved the problem for me. So this was the trick. Keep this Excel spreadsheet available and what you gotta figure out is where it is. So it is in your OneDrive, the person who actually went and built this Microsoft Form, it is in your OneDrive, which in my case was my OneDrive, is where you will find this Excel spreadsheet. So you go over there and you make sure you find that. Then you go back to your flow and you add this delay. Now, why the delay? The delay which I went and added for 30 seconds is just giving this Excel spreadsheet enough time to sync. Because when somebody goes in and fills up the form, it can take a while to sync, depends on the internet connection and the speed that you have. Um, so I went and gave it 30 seconds. Why? Because the people over there are in no hurry. So 30 seconds work but you may have to tweak that. You may have to bump up to 45 seconds or 60 seconds. Play with it, figure it out what it is, um, and just come up with a sweet number, all right? After the delay, the new data comes in, you go ahead and use the get row action. Make sure that you've got the correct file, which is over your Excel spreadsheet. In that file, grab the correct table, go ahead and get the column ID. This column ID is right over here. Go ahead and grab that one, making sure that it is the correct key value. And then after that, go ahead and initialize all of this information. So the communication type for myself will be actually texting. So I'm going to, going to go and use that. Then I went ahead and make sure who's the service provider. So I just created variables for all of this upfront 
to go and grab all this information because then I went and created this communication. The communication is basically to go ahead and say, is this going to be through text? Um, is this going to be through text? In my case, that is the communication process that I've selected. And then after that, based on who your service provider is, it will fill up the correct post fix. For Verizon, it is at vtext.com. For AT&T, it is at text.att.net, so, like so on and so forth. It's got all of that. And then finally, go ahead and actually send that email notification. I've got the person's name. I have their phone number. On our tenant side, it's actually using the Microsoft 365 Outlook. Um, and then it sends the message over here, just the test score. See, the test score is that total points. You see that total points over here? That is the information. So finally, let me show you how this actually worked. On the left side, I've gone ahead and finished filling out the form. The only thing that I have left is to hit submit. On the right side, we've actually opened up that Excel spreadsheet, which is in my OneDrive. So we'll actually see some data come in. And then we'll also switch over to our Power Automate to actually see how the flow works. So here we go. First thing I'm gonna do is come over here, click on submit. It says thanks. On the right side, you see it immediately synced. But now let's go to our Power Automate. Over here, I'm just gonna click on refresh. Hey, it's running. So I'll go over here, take a look to see what's going on. See the delay help, it actually helps. Now I've put 30 seconds, but you know, let's face it, I'm doing this at home, faster internet while you're outside, you might actually use a hotspot. So that 30 seconds time that works for me over here in the demo, it may be have to tweak on your side, okay? So just play with that number. But here it is, we are actually waiting for that 30 seconds to finish. All right, it finished. Now it's going ahead and getting this row, which in our case is two. Went through all of that, variables were sent. In fact, it says it's successful. Uh, but just to make sure, it actually went through. I'm a Verizon person and the email all went through. And if I go ahead and take a look at my Outlook over here, uh, you will see that this phone number is successful, right? So depending on who your service provider is and the phone number, this is basically how it works. But isn't this awesome? Granted, there is this one intervention that is needed from our side, which is having the Excel spreadsheet open, but it worked for me because it made my workflow so much more easier. And hopefully this will work for you as well. So let me end by giving you an example because in my scenario, it was very specific. It was for my wife's 40th birthday, but you can use this guess who scenario. So as a preview, let's go ahead and hit that. Uh, one of the things could be is that you need to know who the person is. Because if you are having an event and you know the group of people who are coming, say like a white elephant time for giving away gifts to each other, um, one of the things you can do is stuff like this. So for example, the first question could be tied to a specific user and then you give some options on who that person could be. For example, first question over here is, twinkling light brings a smile on his face. Two tips over here twinkling lights, which could be like Christmas or holiday lights, and then his, which means we know this is a male, this is actually a dude. So there's some options. There is Shane Young, Reza Durrani, Daniel Christian, and Matthew Devaney. Now, if you know me, you know I'm a big fan of musical holiday lights. So this is definitely me. So if I, if I go and select Daniel, that'll be the next one. Question number two, this is loves watching cricket and can sing like an angel. Again, this is tough because yes, we have been given two tips over here, but they are tough because I know April can sing, I know Reza can sing, and I also know Victor Dantas can sing. But there's one tip, cricket. And Reza is a huge cricket fan. So I'll go and select Reza, and I'll go and click on submit. And then there you go. In this case, I've actually enabled the points. We can see your score for guess who is 20 out of 20 points. Important things you can do next is view results and all of that, which in my case, I had gone ahead and disabled it. But hopefully this gives you ideas of how you can go ahead and replicate some of the things I did, which you can also do. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. And as always, keep using the combination of both Microsoft 365 and Power Platform services. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.